Isaiah chapter 40. Now, there are 66 books in the Bible. There are 66 chapters in Isaiah. Chapter 40, the 40th book in the Bible is Matthew. And it's interesting, at least 712 years before, more than that, 750 years before Matthew is written, there's a division in the book of Isaiah just right between Malachi chapter 39 and Matthew chapter 4. Just, just a kind of gap. Coincidence. Coincidence, I guess, uh, if you want to believe that. But here's a gap. And then even more of a gap is when we start chapter 40, the subject that takes hand is un shadow of a doubt, Matthew, Jesus Christ, John the Baptist. So we begin. Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, the Jews, save your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished. That's not now. That her iniquity is pardoned. That's not now. Verse Thessalonians 2.14 For she has received the Lord's hand double for all her sins. 100% interest. Jeremiah 16.18 That's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble. When they're going to get double. Warfare is accomplished even when Jesus Christ came and died was buried and rose again from the grave. 70 AD Titus came in and destroyed the city again. So that's yet future. Now watch this. Matthew 3, 3. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. That is the ministry and that is the work of John the Baptist. This happened to be after the break of 39 and in chapter 40. The break between the new and the, the old and the new testament. Look at that. How do you know the word of God is God? I mean, look what you have here. 750 years at least break, and they match perfectly. No man can do that. Every valley shall be exalted, lifted up, made in no more valley. Second advent. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. So the earth is going to be a flat plain with only Jerusalem, Mount Zion being the highest point in this earth. One day the highest point of this earth is going to be Mount Zion. The lowest part of this earth is going to be the earth itself. It's going to be a plain. And hills shall be made low. The crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed by the Lord Jesus Christ. And all flesh shall see it together. The Lord Jesus Christ. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken and it's going to be so. The voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass. And all the goodness thereof is as a flower of the field. Flowers will die. The grass withereth. Death. The flower fadeth, it's all gone, the beauty is gone. Because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it, surely the, the people is grass, death, fading, age, no more beauty. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, again repeated. But the word of the Lord shall stand forever, 1 Peter 1.23. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. O Zion, that bringeth good tidings, that's the good news, that's the gospel. Get thee up into the high mountain, O Jerusalem, that bringeth good tidings, the gospel. Lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up to be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God, 
Preach in the streets. Lift up your voice. You yell and you're screaming. You're angry. No, well, trying to get your attention. Um, Ezekiel says, "Lift up your voice on high and uh, show my people their transgressions." Behold, the Lord God will come with a strong hand, and His arm shall rule for Him. Behold, His reward is with Him; His work is before Him. His work before Him is He's destroying the nations. That, that have rebelled against him and against his nation, the, the Jews. He shall flee, feed his flock like a shepherd. He's called the, the, the shepherd in 1 Peter 2.25. He shall gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and shall gently lead those that are with young. And that's the picture, you know, you'll see Jesus carrying the sheep. That's the nation of Israel as he picks them up in sail of Petra. And the ones that are, are with the young, you know, they're just giving birth. He guides them with love and care. And this you'll find in John chapter 10. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Who meted out, let's measure out, uh, you call it like a meter stick. Who has meted out the heaven with a, with the span? Who has measured the heaven? I mean, who, who's got the ruler out there and measured it? And comprehended the dust of the earth in a measure. Who's measured all the dirt, from, dirt the dust, excuse me, on the earth? And weighed the mountains in scales. I mean, if you take in Mount Ararat and put it in a scale, by how much it weighed? The volcanoes, I mean, those, I mean, they're a mountain, but they got a big hole in them. How much do they weigh? And the hills and the balance. Have you taken all the hills and weighed it out? I bet you God has. I bet you God has it recorded somewhere. Anybody's ever read First Chronicles and, and all those numbers and numbers, the book itself, knows that God keeps perfect records. Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit? God, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, when I'm gone, I will send the Comforter. I will pray for the Father to send the Comforter. So the Father says, all right, go to that person. He's saved. And dwell with him. Be his comfort. The Holy Spirit says, yes, sir. Bye. Being his counselor, who has taught him? Well, Mary and Joseph taught Jesus things. Hebrews said he had to uh, learn obedience, I believe it is. He grew up in a synagogue. But who has taught God? Can God sit down in any classroom and listen to what man has to say? Yet man teaches every single day what, what he thinks. He despises God in the classrooms of all the world. Saying that Big Bang and, and all the things he doesn't know. And God just sit there and listens, and the Bible says, Behold, the eyes of the Lord in every place, beholding the evil and the good, just listening to the foolishness of man, trying to teach God what they think happened. And they weren't even there. With whom took he counsel? Oh. So, when Israel was in the wilderness, he took counsel of Moses. But who did he seek when he created the heavens and the earth and all that he created? Who did he turn to and say, well, what do you think we should do? I mean, did he pull all the angels? All right, angels, what do you think about the giraffe? Do you like what he looks like? Who instructed him and taught him in the path of judgment? No one. Now, this is... This is Chapter 40, Matthew being the 40th book. Matthew being the book that's directed Jesus Christ as King of the Jews. And really, Jesus steps up to the plate being born as God, who is God. Who's going to? He already knows. He doesn't have to learn how to be a king. He doesn't have to learn judgment. It's already given to him by the attribute of God. Who's going to teach him? 
and taught him knowledge, and showed to him the way of understanding. I mean, you ever read the places when he was in the synagogues and he spoke and they are all they're all maimed? Thirteen years old, he's in the temple speaking with the lawyers and the and the, and the doctors and all them. They're like, wow, what? He didn't have to teach him everything. He already knew. He is the Word. And he knows what you're thinking. And he knows what you've done even though it has not been told or seen. He's already seen it. Being God. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket. That's where that expression comes from. What are the nations? What is America? Take a bucket and put a little drop of water in it. That's what America is. And that book is all the universe, all the earth, all the planets, all the stars, and there's a little tiny drop. But he says nations. It's not one nation, it's all the nations. There's a drop in a bucket. Take a little medicine dropper and put a little drop in there. And are counted as the small dust of the, of the balance. A little tiny thing, a little speck. That's what it is, speck. I got a little speck in my eye. All right. When God gets a little speck in his eye, which he doesn't, but when he gets the little speck in your eye, that's nations. It's a little tiny thing. Who cares? Everyone thinks America is so great. Guy yells at me other day, you're supposed to be praying for your country. And I do. But what are we? Who are we? Behold, he taketh up the isles as a very little thing. And Lebanon is not sufficient to burn. It's a Lebanon, it's a forest, it's cedar trees. Nor the beast thereof sufficient for a burnt offering. That's a lot of sacrifices, but it's not enough. So Jesus Christ, Isaiah 40, Matthew 40, is the one complete offering that is enough. And you don't need a fire and you don't need animals. You need the Lord Jesus Christ as your sin offering for all nations. All nations before him are as nothing, zero, zip, nada. They are counted to him less than nothing and vanity. You, I mean, you get somebody start talking about America, you get a Christian start speaking about America, America, America. Give him Isaiah 40. And watch him get mad. To whom then will ye liken God? What are you going to liken God to? Who are you going to pair a pair of God to like and put next to him? He's beyond man, and yet he's sinless, unlike man. He's wonderful. He's great. He's the all of all. Who are you going to match God with? Now I can tell you the exact opposite of God, Satan. I can tell you everything that God is and does. I can tell you the exact opposite of Satan. I mean, what Satan is. But who am I going to match with God? You ever just think about, and I haven't, but you ever, just, you ever want a perplexing moment that you can't sleep at night and and prevent yourself from trying to get yourself? Just try to think about who God really is and what he is. Do you realize that all the people that have been in the world for 6,000 years, that he has helped and aided and, and given them strength and answered their prayers and died for them? And offer them the salvation and offer a way to escape. No Old Testament, New Testament alike. Listen, when he was going to drown out the whole world, he put a preacher on a, on a weird ship and said, come. They wouldn't listen to the preacher. So God said, listen, I'll have all the animals go by themselves as a testimony. God left it. Listen, you read that book and it says that God shut the door. God left that door open for just a little, even after it rained, started raining. He left that door open for man to come in. 
Now, I'm sorry, God has never saved my soul from a flood. Now, he saved me from drowning one time. And when you take an individual, of all the individuals that have been on this planet, I mean, the nations are dropping a book. Who was naming the Syrian? Who? I don't know. Never met him. Long, 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 long time ago. He had to be someone's son. He had to be someone's husband. He had to be someone's dad. And God reached down and said, I'm going to cure you of your leprosy. And I'm going to mention your name in the New Testament, in the Gospel. And when you take, and I'm trying to get, I know it's a long way. When you take every individual, God has done something to every individual that he has not done to another individual in their own unique kind of way. As far as I know, I don't know how many people were saved in April 1987. I safely assure that no one but me has knelt down at my grandma's uh, living room table, coffee table. I got saved at a coffee table. Now, how many other people can say, okay, yeah, okay, I got saved at a coffee table. I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. There are people who got out, they knew that Jesus Christ was God, they knew Jesus Christ was virgin. I knew that too. I wasn't thinking about that the day I got saved. There are some that, hey, listen, you, I try to run somebody all the way through. And I want to make sure their salvation is sealed. And how many people, after their salvation, God has touched them with the word of God and say, listen, go do, and be done. And he's blessed all the way. Listen, I, I've done worse in my life after I was saved by backsliding, but God says, God still had mercy and grace with me. How many people can say that? And what God has done in my life, what I know, I don't know anybody else's life. I know particular details, okay, but I know what God has done for my whole life. And I've seen times where, you know what? Without his mercy and grace, I would be in hell today. Without his mercy and grace, I wouldn't be where I am today, being taken care of by God. I look at the checkbook sometimes and I just wonder, how did it work? And we leave here, to whom will you liken God? I, I don't know who I can liken God. He, he's a great accountant. He's a great healer. He's a great taking care of. He's a great guidance. He's a great man. He's a great preacher. He's a great writer of a, of a book. He's the great of everything. of the great to be great of my life and save me. If you were to put a gun to my head and say, explain God who he is, I'd be with God right now. <laughs> Hi, God. <laughs> Couldn't explain you. Where do you want me to stand? Or what likeness will you compare him unto him? Excuse me. What likeness will you compare unto him? Now imagine some fool making an image of Jesus Christ or a cross or a picture of God. Now I have been in churches where I've seen the stained glass windows of Jesus and the apostles being black. Well, wait a minute. These people over here say he's white. The Bible says he's Jewish. I've seen Jesus on a cross. I've seen Jesus reaching out with a nail print of his hands in the wrong spot, I think. Scripture with scripture. I've seen a white Jesus. I've seen a Jesus with long, flowy hair. I've seen a Jesus this. I've seen a Jesus that. I've seen a Jesus this. I've seen, even seen pictures trying to picture God with, with gray hair. What likeness will you give unto him? They say the, the the Statue of Liberty, the French or Italian, whatever whoever gave it to us, the Statue of Liberty's face was was modeled after the modeler's mother. When you try to make an image of God and a cross, whatever you're trying to make an image or likeness of God, you're making an image of of man. Excuse me, Genesis two says man was made in the image of God. You know what's wrong with these necklaces and these earrings and these tattoos and everything? You're making God the image of man, and that is the reverse of Genesis chapter 2. 
You have perverted the scriptures because the Bible says we are made in God's likeness. The workman melted the graven image. There we go. And the goldsmith spreads it over with gold and casts it in silver chains. Is that what God is? God is molten, melted, goo. That's what they say the Big Bang was. You're starting your God off as science as the Big Bang, goo. Is that how you want to explain God? An evolutionary kind of thing that goo and here he is? God is gold and silver. You wish he was. Gold and silver is canker. It has infirmities in it. It is not pure. Are you saying God is impure? When you're hanging that sterling silver Jesus Christ around your lip, around your lip, wow, around your neck, and you're wearing that gold Jesus Christ on the cross in your ears, and you got him tattooed in your your sinful body, you are saying that Jesus Christ is impure. That's what the Bible says. Your body is a sin. Gold and silver is cankered. See Jesus? That's good. How many people have come up to us in the street and, and shown us the cross and kissed it? And this, this is my God. Really? Is that pure? Well, no, it's 14 karat. So you got a 14 karat God. I got a 100% karat God. And you can't even measure God with what we're reading. So take off the carrot. I got 100% God. He that is so is impoverished that he has no oblation. Chooseth a tree that will not rot. Tree? Isaiah? I mean, uh, Jeremiah? You mean a tree that has two sticks? The cross. But he, uh, excuse me, he seeketh unto him a cunning workman to prepare a graven image that shall not be moved. Well, you got to nail it. So when you go into churches, where do you see? You see a cross on a wall that won't be removed. Oh, man, it's in the Bible. Who told you we were supposed to honor the image of the cross? Curses he that, that dieth on a tree, the Bible says. What if he died on a, in an electric chair? Would you nail that to the wall of your church? The, the old electric, electric chair. Oh, I'll cherish and sit in the old electric chair. No, I'll cherish Jesus Christ. Yes, I, Calvary's cross, I come to that for salvation. But it ain't the piece of wood, it's Jesus Christ. That wood did nothing for me. Matter of fact, it may have gave Jesus splinters with all the pain in his in his back, in his hands. It may give him slivers. That cross is a image. It is made by man. And the Bible says. It shall not be removed. Yeah, you, you nail it. Have you not known? Question. Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understanding from the foundation of the earth? I wasn't there with the foundation of the earth. <laughs> so what am I going to know? I was born in 1968. You figured that all the way back when... Time first began, Genesis chapter 1. It's been a long time. I wasn't there. I'll be there eternity future, but not eternity past. It is he. Now, 
I have in my book, and I'm not going to do some credit. I mean, plus or minus. I have BC 712. I'm going to say AD. BC 712, the year 712 BC. NASA has, has never, this is long before they put spaceships in outer space. This is long, this is, you know, the earth is flat. They didn't really believe that. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth. How did Isaiah know the earth was round? Christopher Columbus, you're going to fall off the earth. The earth is uh, no one. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Christopher Columbus came here with crosses on the ship. What church? What church did he come over here from Spain? The Roman Catholic Church, and they did not know the Bible said the earth was round. Somebody did not read their Bible, Mr. Columbus. And then Columbus came over here. He didn't discover America. He discovered the, 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 the West Indies. He came over here for a Jamaica uh, Bahamas trip. That's what he came over here. And what did they do? They stole the gold and they stole men's, men's souls, slaves. You ever read what the, what the merchandise of Mystery Babylon is over there? The Bible told you, Mr. Columbus, the earth is a circle. And read a note here. Let's see the remarkable reference to the spherical city of the earth. See Isaiah 42, 5, 44, 24, 51, 13, Job 9, 8, Psalms 104, 2, and Jeremiah 10, 12 on that circle of the earth. Who sits on the circle of the earth? Who's it say? It says God, right? You know what the world says it is? You know what the world say, says it sits on the circle of the earth? Santa Claus. He's at the North Pole. So when you believe in Santa Claus that comes from the North Pole, you are not a Bible believer, and you have taken God down and put Santa Claus in his spot. What's wrong with serving, being Santa Claus and being a Christian? You have removed God from the throne and put Santa Claus. Isaiah 40, 22. Do you know who... Matthew, the 40th book in the Bible is about, it's about Jesus Christ. Who sits at the North Pole? Who sits in the North Place? Jesus Christ. It is he that sits in the part of the circle of the earth. Jesus Christ, not Santa Claus. And the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers. I think that's what the Israelites said, or, or something like that, when they came into the land to spy it out. There's all these giants, and we're just... You know what you are to God? You're just a grasshopper. Grasshoppers eat gra uh, grass and leaves. You know what man ate in the beginning? He ate grass and leaves and herbs and fruit. So oh, you are. We didn't start eating meat until well, at least the Bible records to Noah. Gotta have all those extra animals on there, sacrifice to God and barbecue. Come on. That stretches out the heavens as a curtain. The aurora borealis, the northern lights. How did Isaiah know that there's a curtain of lights up north when he'd never been there? Did Isaiah get in a spaceship and get, get to the moon and look at, hey, well, look at that. It's round. I believe that reference in Job tells us, uh, Job 9.8, I think that's the one. He hangs the earth upon nothing. I believe that's what that reference is. He puts Job older older than Isaiah getting out there his spaceship well, where's the strings no strings attacks out here I'll leave a note I'll, I'll get a sticky note here's a sticky note I'll get a sticky note Isaiah this is Job I'm in my spaceship the earth hangs on nothing and by the way why don't you tell them in chapter 40 it's round
All right, I'll give him a sticky note. Later on, he'll find that, you know, in the in the Lost Raiders and all that other junk. He'll go on his mission to find my note and say, it's no, 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 no. The one that created it knows, like, it's all, sit down and write it. Men wrote the Bible. But Isaiah and Job wasn't in our space to know what was going on. All right, in 1611, they didn't know, they had not been in our space to know nothing. Come on, this is the Bible. It spreads them out as a tent to dwell in. You know, one day I'm going through that tent door. The tabernacle. You know what that tabernacle was? It was a tent in the wilderness. That bringeth the princes to nothing. The world, world leaders will be nothing. Zilch, not a. He maketh the judges of the earth as vanity. How many judges we got in the, in, in the world? Cares. Jesus Christ will sit as the judge of all judges, the holy righteous judge. Yea, they shall not be planted where they can take root. Be no root. Yea, they shall not be sown. Wasn't there a parable in the, in the Gospels about a guy going out spreading seed in the gospel? In the heart and the reactions of men to the gospel, one one rooted root was proper, brought forth plant, brought forth fruit, uh, 40, 60, 100, I think it is. They, their stock, that's the main part of the shoot of the plant, shall not take root in the earth. Death. You don't take root in the earth. You, you're not the root brings the nutrients, brings the water, brings the fertilization, and uh, it brings everything to the plant for food. The, the roots are straws. You ain't got a root, you ain't got life. You ain't got root in Jesus Christ and, and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and the foundation that's laid by the God, the salvation that, that, that Jesus Christ shed his blood for. Us. You ain't got no root. He shall also blow upon them, and they shall wither. Blow upon him when he comes back in second advent, the fire comes out of his mouth, and the whirlwind shall take them away as stubble. To whom then will you liken me? <laughs> There's a question. Okay, after all this, who are you gonna liken me to? That's a great question. That's a question you just really need to. Who, who are you gonna like? What has? What is it? Count your many blessings, name them one by one. Of what God is to you, or shoot, or shall I be equal? Who, who are you gonna equal God to? Saith the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high. Look up, and behold, who has created these things? Who created those stars? Who created the trees that you're looking at? The birds are in the trees. The sun, the moon, that bringeth out their host by number. God knows how many. The Bible says he tends the funeral of the sparrow. He feeds the lions. And yet he can count the number of hairs on your head or subtract. You know, when you find hair in your hairbrush, God knows how many hairs in that hairbrush and how many are in your head. Who can do that of everyone? He calls them all by names by the greatness of his might. And the Bible says he has a name for all the stars. He says, look up. Look up. God has a name for all. You know, it may not be Jupiter God. Jupiter is a Roman God. I know it's I know it's written in the Bible as Jupiter, but that's a man's name. He calls it by name by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, no one failing. Why sayest thou, O Jacob, and speaketh, O Israel, my way is hid from the Lord? And my judgment is passed over from my God. Why do you say God can't see me? 
According to Matthew, Jesus Christ who's walking this planet is watching you. God is watching you. Anyways, wherever Jesus wants, God is. Okay, I see that. Ever wonder if any of the wicked people who heard, they ran? Ran from Jesus. Listen, those that wanted to get right ran to Jesus. What about those who didn't want to get right? Jesus saw them. Twenty-eight. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard? Well, you heard Jesus that the everlasting God, the Lord, the Creator of all of all, the Creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not. Oh, oh, give me a glass of water. Dagon fainted when they brought the ark into his room. Fainted right twice he fainted. And be weary. Elijah's over there mocking, call aloud, baby he's sleeping. I'm a God that doesn't sleep. I have a God that doesn't sleep. What happened to Sennacherib's God when he was worshiping in his temple and his sons came up and killed him? What was his God doing? Must have been sleeping weary or something, going to the toilet or something. I don't know. What was he doing? On the phone? Hello, other guys. How are you doing? Uh, wait a minute. I think I heard something. Oh, yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the. the, the, the I think something's going to happen on my. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. And I could believe in a God that couldn't do nothing, that had no power. Don't you think those Philistines, when they came in and found Dagon falling upon the ground, uh, we got something wrong here. This God's falling down twice, and now he's broken in pieces. I don't think we have the right God. When when Sa when Samson brought down uh, Dagon's temple there, and all those men and women woke up in hell, oh, we got the wrong God. Samson woke up in Abraham's bosom. There is no searching of his understanding. You can't find out what God is. He giveth power to the faint. Oh, he fainteth not, but he gives power to those that are oh, this is so ill, Lord. Give you strength. Samson gave strength. He was blinded. And be wary. Look at the life and ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. All those that were sick and and their ailments. And the young men shall utterly fail. For they that wait upon the Lord. I'm waiting on the Lord. Shall renew their strength. I'm going to get a new strength. I'll never get tired. I'll never be weary. I'll never faint. I will never fall. They shall mount up. All right, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Um, eagles fly above. Eagles will fly above the storm. I can't read my own notes. And while while you are in the storm, they are in sunshine. While you're in the tempest. They are in the calm. If there's a storm, an eagle will go above the storm and go above the clouds. And he has no idea what's going on underneath. I've been there. I've been through the tempest. I've been through the storm and just flying above. It's a wonderful thing. They shall run and not be weary. Watch me run and see how quick I hurt, how quick I get tired. I ain't gonna run very far. I mean, you see some of these people, they have a bear come get then they run. If a bear came up to me, he's got styly burgers. I guarantee I'll be in heaven. There ain't no way I'm gonna run, outrun him. And they shall walk and not be faint. You keep pace with the Lord. 
and you'll have peace. You walk with the Lord. Don't walk behind Him. Don't walk ahead of Him. Walk with Him. That's the way to go.